Hello and welcome to Phillips Mill Community Association's Art Talk. I'm Laura Womack and with me is technical producer Jen McHugh. Hi everyone. Today we're talking with Pam Miller. She's known for her landscapes with payrolls, which she wants to capture before they disappear from the Bucks County scene forever. She says her work is dedicated to the simple pleasure of viewing a field, to the work of a farmer's imprint on the land, and to the long playing motion picture of the seasons. Her homage is composed in pastel of intense color and the changing light of day. Pam is this year's honored artist for Phillips Mill, as well as the signature image artist. She's exhibited at Phillips Mill Community Association's annual jury art show many times and received numerous awards. She was part of Phillips Mill's 75th retrospective invitational show in 2005 and is included in the book of the exhibition. A local fixture, Pam has exhibited widely, including at the Philadelphia Sketch Club, Coriel Gallery, and others. She earned her teacher certification at North Northland College in Wisconsin and taught in public schools for many years. She now gives private art classes. Pam is also a dear friend of mine. She's one of my oldest friends in Bucks County, introduced to me by Joanne Goodwin, who is tonight's guest producer. Jean Mihich is our managing producer. Pam Miller, thank you so much for joining us on our talk. Thank you. It's great. I can't wait to see my work put on the screen. And thank all of you for joining us. We'd love to have you put your questions to Pam, put them in the Q&A, and Jen will get to them. And so we're excited to talk to Pam, a very personal art talk. Pam, congratulations on your double achievement, honored artist and signature image artist. The signature image is voted on blindly based on the image alone. No one knows who did the image when the art committee votes. And the honored artist is in recognition of an artist who has a long association with the mill and a relationship with the, uh, the juried art show. And you've been in the show many times and you also served for years on the art committee, didn't you? Yes, I have. I've been on the art committee for 35 years and I was in charge of tea hosting. And um, it, it, the reason why I am excited about the mill is because uh, my maternal family uh, was born and raised in Bucks County and Montgomery County. They were all Quakers. And when I moved to New Hope in my art studies, I really was not a, much, that much aware of the New Hope Art School. So it was um, a must do situation for me. Well, it's been a pleasure. You were on the art committee when I joined mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm glad you're having this lovely year. And yes. this is, the signature image, which I think has gotten, I mean, the feedback I've had on it has been tremendous. Tell Thank us you. tell us about your image here, Pam. Well, I guess as many people, animals are absolutely amazing. And this cat came to every party, every opening for years. Oh, there he is. And um, he just came to see people. And I don't know if the other pictures there of him strutting into the mill, but it's extraordinary how determined and how happy he was. It, it was just a spirit of, oh, well, I think I'm going to have fun rather than, am I going to sell a painting? So um, I always wondered how he got across the road and he lived along this um, argillite path and lived back in a barn and he was walking in front of the mill and he sat down and then looked off to the left. This car was passing and he would listen to see the next car come. And then that car passed and then he listened and then he walked across the street. And if you look there on the left, you can see two leaves crossed. 
that's hoping that he'll make it across. That's his good luck sign right there. Oh, I love that. So now, Pam, Pam, do we know the name of this cat? Do we know anything no, about it? No, I know he lived in a barn or a garage and he, there one of the panels in the garage was broken and he popped his head out one day. So that's all I know. I've asked people what his name was and um, nobody seems to be able to know, but you know, what a guy. What a guy. So lovely cat. Um, it's an interesting image mm -hmm. to choose to submit for the signature image. Well, why, I just is, this, why like, is the cat facing away? You're not, we're not looking yeah, at the building. There's right, a car. Right. This is pretty unorthodox. Well, you know, I think animals know everything. They just don't write books and they don't paint and, you know, they don't care about their history. They just hang out and hopefully have as good a time as they can. I mean, he's obviously well fed. You know, I don't know how many mice he ate. But that's all I know. He came to the party and people were happy. And, you know, some people ignored him, I guess. And I just thought he was great. But why did you choose to submit this image? Looking at the back of a cat, away yeah. from the building, some car passing by. You know, you've got well, another I, I, building framed in the image. What, how is this representing Phillips Mill? Well, he's sitting on the steps right in front of Phillips Mill, and Phillips Mill is right there. And sure, I get that literally, but it's it's an unorthodox choice, right? Sure, but um, I like to tell stories. And this cat was on this earth, and here's his story. So for, for all time, he will be remembered. I think it's a great homage to the um, to the cat. And I actually personally, maybe I shouldn't express an opinion, but I think it's great that the art committee chose something that was a, a little bit different. Yeah. So. Well, the cat was a member. He just didn't pay. There we <laughs> All are welcome. All are welcome. That's right. Okay, Jim, what else do we have from Jen, from Pam Miller? There's my son. Uh, this is my son. And the name of the picture is called Tim Coming to America. And I kind of wanted him to look like he was in shock and awe. And, you know, a little confused, but slightly happy to be here. And this is, he was, this image was taken in uh, New Hope when he was about three and a half, four years old. And um, you can see that the sun is setting on the on his left side. Well, in New Hope, that's how the sun sets in New Hope. But I placed him in front of the land that my husband owns behind the hill that we all own. It's where that green line is. And this is the Blue Mountain with the Appalachian Trail. And we named our farm after him. His middle name means gentle stone. So um, I, even though, you know, the sun, the sun would set over here, the sun sets here on the Lehigh Valley from this image. And, but I said to heck with it, nobody's going to know. And he, he, he was in red, white, and blue. And um, so that's the, the composition. This is um, a hill that you go way down and then come back up. Laura, you've been there. So you've seen this hill. And David's family used to call it the old lady's hat because it was contoured. Nice. I like to, Pam, I mean, talking about the art of it, I like, um, I'm showing on my screen, my cursor, this little sort of chunk that's going out of the, I guess this is a cornfield. Yeah. Pointing at your son uh, in a very nice, there we oh. go. Thank you, Jen. Thank um, you. And those lines continue to really sort of draw your eye towards your son's lovely young face. Yeah. Yeah. And is what, what is the medium here? This is pastel. And I want, 
I, I, I want to tell you about uh, why we named him Timothy Gentle Stone Miller. He, um, his middle, his, his name was Yang Su Cha. And in Korean, it's Cha Yang Su. And yet they told us that Yang Su meant gentle stone. So, you know, I thought, well, I didn't really want to call him Dave because that would be a little weird in, in the same household. So I named him Timothy after the grass, it's a grain. And then our name is Miller. So the Timothy is gently milled. So a Timothy Gentlestone Miller. Mm. Very beautiful. Thank you. Jim, what do we have next? And and please join us in the Q&A. Ah, this is my husband's grand nephew. His name is Carter and he is in Florida now. He studied um, marine biology and but in the long run, he became a journalist. So he's a journalist for a small newspaper in Florida. So how long ago did you do this picture? Okay, he's like 22. So, you know, the the thing is, it's, it doesn't matter how long ago or when it was done because they can't always do them at the time they were done. So it could have been 10 years ago and he was already, you know, 16 or something, you know, right. so. I mean, I think you've done a really nice job here, Pam, of catching, capturing the life of this image. I mean, this young boy is looking at us. Um, there's an expression. As I, to me, I see a slight smile. Mm -hmm. um, he's very alert. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, that's really challenging to capture, particularly in a young subject. Ah, uh, well... As I was saying to Jen earlier, I think young people are the smartest people in the world. So in that ginormous head that all young people have compared to their body, the whole universe is in there ready to be, you know, developed. But as humans, they're pretty remarkable. And you now you used to drive a school bus, right? Yes, I did. And I gather that you weren't um, particularly fond of children when you started driving a school bus. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't the school bus. It was. Be, it was. I didn't become fond of children until I worked with pre-K children. Okay. What did you do with pre-K children? Well, we had a lot of fun. Um, basically, we drew or we colored or. Uh, the one teacher I worked with, who was my student, Barbara Robb, excuse me, she was a fabulous art teacher. So she developed all these great projects for the students at the clubhouse for kids. So I don't know. They're just amazing. That's about it. Okay. All right. Let's That's see another, let's see another image, Jen. Ah, that's uh, Mary Flamer's mother. And Mary Flamer, to remind people who are watching, is the chair of the Phillips Mill Art Show. Uh, great portrait. Thank you. Tell us about, again, there's a lot of life. There's a, you've got a real talent in conveying gentle amusement, not an overt yeah. laughing smile. But you see the humor and the lightness in her face. Yeah. That has to be challenging to accomplish. Well, um, I will say yes. I will. I'll. I'll say yes because I know what I want. But you know, I won't stop until I get there. I just, you know, I just want all the wisdom and the love that people have in them, and the generosity. And there's nothing like just a little turn up in the lips. <laughs> it just gives that secrecy or that, you know, you don't know what she's thinking. I don't know what she's thinking, except she looks very happy. She does. I mean, she, I feel like she's looking at me and there's something very, there's a lot of content to that expression. Yeah. And I feel like we're, I'm having a conversation with her. I'm wow. not sure what I just said, but she's definitely reacting and part of that conversation. 
Well, I, I grew up in New York and I used to look at faces as everybody in New York does. And to give the aside of what I thought, I remember one day driving down the road um, with my family and I was on the left side and this car passed and I said, oh, that's an amazing face. And I said, I think I'll remember that face. Well, I can't remember the face, but I remember the moment. So I'm just fascinated. Yeah. And there's a lot of motion here too. I mean, her hair is in motion. Mm, I feel like she's leaning you. in. Yeah. Thank you. So Pam, you, if my understanding is that you taught yourself to do portraits, is that right? Well, yes. I, I, I was at the Frick when I was around eight years old and I saw this portrait and I thought it was a Van Eyck, but I'm not quite sure. And she had no eyebrows and a, you know, a fancy hat. And I thought, Ooh, that's a strange style because I was only eight. But then I said, Oh my gosh, she lived back in the 1500s. And I thought, my God, she's 400 years old. That portrait is 400 years old. And so that's what amazed me about how a human can just jump off a page and have lived 400 years ago and be as relevant as I am or anybody. And there she was. And that was a long time ago. And then Phyllis Haldeman and I went to the Frick just recently and, uh, well, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. And once again, it's like, oh my goodness, look at these pictures. You know, Mr. Frick had fine taste and lots of money, so he did very well. And it's kind of nice that these places are available for the public to see, to see all this phenomenal wealth and phenomenal pictures that they aspire to collect. So you were inspired by going to museums oh, and I yeah. know you're, you're, you went there as a young woman or a young girl with your family. Yeah. How did you teach yourself to do portraits? That's not a simple. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. That's a good question. Um, do you remember the old, um, let's say better housekeeping magazines and they used to show the Breck girl, the new Breck girl every month. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, they have beautiful hair. So I paint, I, I did them in crayon or pencil and I would do them on my mother's and later my stocking insert. You know, when you bought your stockings and they had that piece of hard, little bit of cardboard. So that's what I used as my first palette or my first canvas. They're not bad, you know, they're okay but I freehanded them and just learned. The one thing I knew was that I could take a small image and blow it up. I knew that, and I could blow it up within the correct proportions. So I knew that. Uh, I was, think, yeah. I think scaling up is hard, especially well, with I, faces. And that's the thing I think is so, I'm, I'm, I'm dwelling on it, Pam, because you know I read somewhere humans, our vision and our brains are like computers that are developed to look at faces. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the hardest things an artist can do is to get a likeness because yeah. our brains were so critical. We know what yeah. a face looks like. And so that is truly an accomplishment. Oh, well, thank you. I, you know, I will say that my sisters, I did my nieces, I've never done my family, but I've done my nieces and nephews, which maybe we'll see later. And, um, you know, we were all a bunch of little toehead, cute little toeheads running around. So, you know, I got inspired by our cuteness. <laughs> okay, good. So there you go. All right, good. Oh, there, oh, Jen oh is always God. so good at chasing oh my, this stuff down. I think I did her. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, Jim, we've got some comments um, or some some questions. Please all join us in the QA. But what do we have already? Okay, we have a couple comments for you. Uh, Lisa Harrison said about the signature image. Mm -hmm. Anyone who knows the mill knows those iconic steps and that view of the turn and stop sign. 
Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I like I like that it's a little bit insider. It's a good choice. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And then Tom Chesser said, please tell Pam congratulations on having the signature okay. image and the honored artist selection. All well deserved. Well, Tom Chester and I had a show together at Janet Hunt's Choreo Gallery about 25 years ago. And I I don't think I was audacious, but I did put the poetry of Emily Dickinson to all the landscape images. And Tom Chester also put some poems under his artwork. And I, I'm going to say, I think it was the most, one of the most successful shows she ever had. And, um, you know, I, you know, it's tough for me to realize that I'm really good because I, I have this other little thing over here saying, well, maybe you're okay, Pam, you know, but, you know, Tom's a fabulous artist and I appreciate his comment. I was going to say that coming from Tom Cheshire, who is a lovely man as well as an extraordinary, yes. artist, that means a lot. I will, I think that's a nice one. And it was, and Janet Hunt put the two of us together and voila, great success. Yeah, and she's another icon of Absolutely. our local art scene. Yep. Okay, we've got another comment. Um, Jen, what do we got? Sorry, my unmute is not working. Uh, Jen Un said, Pam, we love you. Um, oh. As one of your students, I'm curious to know, what do you love most? and least about teaching painting? Well, I, I don't dislike anything. I am 76 years old and I have finally accomplished what I've wanted since I was eight. You know, I hung in there. I went through lots of things and voila, I'm doing what I want. And the one thing I like is that I allow my students cr to critique and have input besides myself because I like to talk. And so I give my students freedom to talk too. And then they find things in other people's artwork that I either didn't want to mention because I was so exhausted from talking or I didn't see. So I think there's a lot of collaboration going on between the students and myself because art is so human. I know they will succeed and they have exceeded mightily all my students. And I expect that they will do the best. All right, nice. And agree with everything I say. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I will say, Pam, that I'm not an artist. I did take classes from you for a while. I'd love to do it because it's the most fun. Um, I was not at all obedient. Um, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but I'm also not at all an artist. So right. Well, well, you're an artist in your own way. And <laughs> if there's anything to be said about humans, the things that we have accomplished in celebration of buildings and music and plays and dancing is absolutely astonishing to me. I can watch PBS and not PBS enough. And most of a lot of my art in as I left college has come from PBS. You know, they you know, when they did um, oh gosh, I can't remember. Anyway. You know, all these, I'll say Kahinde, you know, they did something on him and, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's, just it's, amazing. Great. it's great. Let's take a look at some more of your works. Um, we do have more questions and answers questions. We will get to those. Oh. Um, <laughs> but this is a it's lovely a one. <laughs> well, you know, this guy here, Badger is my muse. And I did a painting about him called a, a Gentleman and a Scholar. And you will notice how big he is compared to everybody else. He's really tiny. 
And then this one is Maud, and she is as carefree and self-centered. You can see it's like, you know, she's kind of self-contained. And this one up here is Wilbur, and he's about as scared as a, uh, I don't know, you name it, an insect, any insect running away from something. You can see in his eyes, he's, he, he lives life with restraint. <laughs> So you're telling us about these lovely dogs. You yeah, because to... that's all I care about. <laughs> no, I know you love the people here too. Tell us the context. So, well, there, Joanne wanted me to do a portrait of um, her, she, and with the, the whole cabang here, because she loves animals, her dogs as much as I do. And this is her youngest granddaughter and her older granddaughter. And I couldn't get her hand in here but i love this little book katie loves the kittens and that's a jack russell <laughs> so katie who loves the kittens is a jack russell terrier right and i and i think that badger's a little bored about the story okay yeah, all look right at <laughs> it's lovely and of course so we're all very insider and local phillips milk community local art scene here and I think that we all have have earned this evening um, to celebrate Pam and the local community. So let now your group, you teach at Joanne's studio. Right. And um, your group of painters who exhibit regularly at Chive Cafe in Lambertville of the delicious mm -hmm. lamb sausage sandwiches. Um, your name, the name for that group is the Badger Group. Is that right? Right. Named after him after this gorgeous dog in the foreground, yes, who's just yes. a sweet wire-haired wire -haired Jack Russell. Right. Okay, Jen, I know um, you're working with one monitor tonight. Can we go forward to the Badger series? Because I think we should talk a little bit about art and the technical aspects of art tonight. And I think we've got some process pictures. Um, and maybe while you're looking for that, Jen, maybe shall I take a question or two? Oh, no, she's got it. Okay, tell us, Pam. Well, Badger was sitting on this chair that's in the studio, which is the iconic dog seat. And I think he looks like a gentleman to me and he acts like one. But of course he's a dog. He loves me because I give him snacks, but I still, he has so much dignity. So, I stopped reading about a year or two ago because I finally found my solution, my answers to all my questions. And there are three books here that Ridge and Joanne and, and the Gladden Key family has read, um, The Invention of Nature, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, and The Swerve. And the sapiens, if you will notice, it doesn't say homo sapiens and it doesn't say mankind, it says humankind. So I said, this is my guy. And then Badger wrote three books and his books are Woodchuck Tartar, Hooking with Groundhogs, and My Life with the Goodwins, which is a tell-all. But I won't tell what he saw. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. So we have some process on this. Is that right, Jen? Yeah, there's the one that I, how I set it up. Yeah. So what I do is because um, I use um, pictures, I can blow up the head to the size I want and print it. So I outlined the head and then I freehanded everything else and then made everything else up. So I had to have, I was thinking of putting a pipe and a something here, but you know, that wouldn't make sense. So I just made this lovely um, traditional table. And um, then I filled in the bookshelf. And there are three books that I didn't mention that are in the library. One is The Half Moon Nursery, which is, um, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Ridge, Ridge Goodwin's, uh, nursery, and then I wrote down Floracopia, I think it is, or Floribunda, 
which was Joanne's flower business. And then I wrote in restorations because this is what my husband does. Right. So it has a lot of things in there. A lot so, of significance. Right. Now, Badger is such a gorgeous dog. Yes. And you've got him nearly complete. And yes. the rest is just really basically sketched in very precisely, I might add, but it's all sketched in. So your main subject, you've almost completed at this point. Right, right. And I, I work, I work by shape. Then, then comes form. And then, um, you know, I like lines. So, you know, I have to do a lot of adjustments for the books to make sure they're not all Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. We wouldn't want that. No. Okay. No. All right, Jen. Let's. We've got some questions piling up, some comments piling up. Let's make sure we get those covered. Okay. You also have just a lot of compliments. Uh, Lisa said, You've taught and inspired so many, myself included. I am privileged to know and study with you. Love you, Pam, and so happy to see you honored by the mill. Um, Lisa Stolzer said, first, I'd like to say, Pam, I am so proud of you, and I'm honored to be your student. I'd also like to know why you prefer pastels as a medium. What advantage do they give over other, other media? Okay, well, I would say for 20 plus years, I worked in pastel because I really had a hard time painting in oil. Oil was my first choice. And then when I started working in pastel through the guidance of a local artist named Bonnie McLean, who is no longer with us, she taught me pastel. And Jacques Faber, who did oil and drawing, I learned from him. So I studied with them for several years. And Annalise von Donnellan studied with uh, Jacques Faber also. And um, it just was instant. It just, the intensity was just overwhelming with pastel. And I, I felt a lot of freedom. And it really, and it's so exact that I could do all these layerings of pastel to get the effects. So that's why I liked it. I'm not, I like oil now too. And Lisa and a lot of the students work in acrylics and I'm overwhelmed by that too. So, you know, there's plenty of time, 15 years approximately until I turn 90. So I'm hoping that um, I will accomplish these things. Nora Mechanic does uh, acrylic and Lori Roth and Lisa. And that's a really amazing medium too. So, you know, whatever. It's all out there. All right, good. You're, you're embracing of diversity of techniques. That's right. great. Yeah, Jeff, my, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Pat. No, you go. Oh, well, my family is all artistically driven. And uh, my, my siblings went to George school. My uncle gave, my grand, my grand uncle gave the art, facility to George school and um we just all you know we sewed we my my siblings still knit you know just stuff just always the hands the hands I mean if you don't have something to do not so good yeah that's definitely I agree with that absolutely I want to go through because we're like time is passing very rapidly tonight. I want to make sure we get all the questions. So, Jen, let's have a few more of those and then we'll go back and explore your pottery. Yeah. What do you think? OK, so uh, we have a couple more compliments. Nora said, tell Pam her students love the critique part in class. It's true. We all help each other under Pam's watchful eye. And if Pam doesn't like what we say, she gives us the side eye. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and then Michael said, Pam inspires her students and is always encouraging. But Pam also has said that her students inspire her. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I do without them. It's made me into a whole different person. 
That's and, awesome. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they for I mean, I see their work. Oh, one of the mantras is we can all be jealous of each other's work because I'm really jealous of my students' work. And I know they're jealous of mine, but I'm I'm just so overwhelmed by how good they and how like Joanne Goodwin takes all these courses and then she brings back all this vast information that has helped me do oil. So there you go. It's a win-win. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, one last, uh, Linda Crawford said, what a pleasure to see your work, Pam. When you say you never stop until you get what you want, do you know what you want right from the start? Or does serendipity play into it as you are working? Does it change ever from when you start? Well, it always changes because like, I don't know if you want to pull up that picture of my nephew, Scott, you'll see the progression of the faces until it's finally finished. And I take the pictures of the people, like I took the picture of David's grand nephew. Um, so I, took this picture. Well, you know what? I'm really wrong. Woohoo! A friend took that picture, but I chose that one out of the other ones because, I mean, look at that face and look at that expression. And then this is how it starts. And then I, you know, fine tune it. You know, I'm not too exact on the clothing. And my sister really liked this background. So I said, oh, okay, so that's easy. So I left it in. So wait, I, I actually was gonna ask you about the background. The background to me does not look easy. Oh, that's real easy. That's called easy peasy. Okay, tell us about it. How'd you do well, it? Well, I'll put the dark, you can see up here, I put some dark colors down first and I'll cover the whole background in those colors. And this is a suggestion of the leaves. So then I'll gradually bring up the lighter colors of the pastel. It, pastel is almost like uh, doing a clay sculpture. You have to add on, you don't subtract, you add. So you just build up these layers. So for example, uh, I could have, I don't know if I did, but you see how dark his hair is here? Well, you do the whole head in, in darkness and then you bring it up to the lightness. But don't you have to be very careful with pastel not to, you know, there's a limit to how much pastel the, well, the, okay. the base can take, right? And no. so with, no. oil, okay, so let me finish and then you can correct yes, me. me. Um, but with oil, like you can always put something on top, right? Yeah. And you can, um, you can mix, but my, you taught me, Pam, that there's a limit to how oh. much you can down with pastel. Are you saying oh, no? Yeah. yeah, that's true. But the these pastels are super uh, sandpaper pastels. Um, and you can layer so much and you can make so many mistakes and you can correct them. All right, that's good. But I guess like, you have to take your class to learn how to do that. Sure. It's You're not going to tell us here. No. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, keep your questions and comments coming. I think it's marvelous how much support you have, Pam. Thank you. Um, Jen, if you're ready, um, I, there are some landscapes and we definitely wanna see those. So we're gonna do a little bit of a sprint here. Yeah, let's do a sprint. Let's do a sprint because I think, you know, I've known this before and I'm always surprised when I'm reminded that you started in pottery. Yes. Well, right. I did those sketches, uh, you know, when I was a teenager and I used to copy Christmas cards, you know, and I drew Snoopy and my Snoopies were better than the original Snoopies, I say to myself. But I do like to you know, you copy, you copy, you have to copy, you have to learn the skills of drawing. And um, so what was my point? You started in pottery. Oh, okay, the pottery I did because I had to prove to the rumor in my pottery class in 1966, when they said, you know, the 
the young men in this class said, well, you know, so-and-so doesn't really think that women should be, the teacher shouldn't be, um, or not as capable of being a potter as men are. And I thought, oh gosh, here we go again. And so I, I chose to do dinnerware as opposed to artware. You know, I didn't do art pottery. So this is, uh, these are all, um, I invented these glazes. I call them Seacrest. I had a business with my sister and we sold chemicals to mix glazes. And I wanted a nice tea handle and I just love this sort of purple red with the green. And I just thought it was beautiful. It's so it's really lovely. Thank you. And the motif here at these pinched in points, is that oh. there's a shell? These are seashells and it's called Seacrest. Okay, tell us why. Oh, I don't know. I like seashells. And the odd thing is, is that my husband, um, the seashell is an amazing um, point of American furniture and world history. Seashells are in so many cultures. And so, and they're kind of pretty. So I would hand apply them, you know, just, and the, the one reason why I stopped pottery is because you have to be there. You can't let it dry. You can't get one section of another pot dry or wet. So it's literally babysitting, I think. And I, I got tired. I didn't have enough, um, you know, I didn't, I would have liked to have other people to work with me, but that didn't happen. And, um, I gave lessons. I had three wheels in this pottery. This whole studio was dedicated to clay. And then I got tired of carrying up the heavy bags up the stairs. You know, it was a whole, you know, you have to lift the shelves out of the kiln. You know, Debbie Tinsman knows that. It's a, it's physical. And didn't you, you were selling clay. Yeah. And you had, at one point you were unloading three tons. Yes, by uh, myself. Three tons of clay, which is 6,000 pounds, if I remember yes. my units of measurement. And these are like, you did this by yourself, yes. 50 pound bags. I did the math. It's 120 bags yep. of pottery, of uh, clay, 50, 120 50 pound bags that yep. you unloaded by yourself. That That is a lot of work. And as I said earlier, I had to keep my sanity. I just picked up, it, took it off the bed of the truck, turned around, and the man was helping me. He put him on the truck on the bed. It was so nice of him. And then I would turn around and say, okay, I'm not going to scream. And then I turn around, <laughs> pick another bag up and put it over there and put it down. Woo, that was worth How long did that take you? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, Crazy things happen in life. And you sold the business the next day. I pretty much, <laughs> I sold the whole thing. Well, you know, and there were 10,000 10, bags. No, I think I had 10,000 tons or some bizarre number of, of in, in inventory. Oh, oh my goodness. Anyway, that's over. All right. So- uh, I was going to ask you the the beautiful pictures of your pottery. Mm -hmm. You're so precise with your pottery. I mean, you're so shape precise with my work. Yeah, you are a very um, precise person. I think um, so. But Jen, do you mind if we go to? I think it's slide fourteen. It's a a, um, a landscape with hay bales. And I'll finish my question. Oh my I gosh. You, you're looking. So just the precision. Oh, well, this, yeah. This is amazing. Well, this is the picture of Marshall's Field where um, all the houses are. And when it was, it's, you can see the little development sign. And, I mean, but look at the precision of the landscape. The farmers did that. You know, the cuts and the rectangles and the triangles and the, amorphous shapes. I mean, crazy. 
so I just is that I think you look at an artist's work and you see their personality and um you know it like it, it's almost a reverse Rorschach test and your work always amazes me with its precision what's going on there Pam I don't know that's really weird because I don't think I'm so perfect as a person except that I'm really nice but I don't know why I like to do this <laughs> I mean, i'm not getting a lot of answers out of you but i'm enjoying but i mean it's like it's like how can you not like all those colors i mean this is what this is what we live to see every day yeah. and you know solbury has saved a heck of a lot of land and you know and this field was the only field in new hope or any field that i'll know but that you could drive around this field 360 degrees. You know, Sugan's here on the right. Kitchens Lane is at the top of the field. 202 is over on the left. And then Sugan is coming around. So I just stood there for years and photographed it. I have so many slides. And the one reason why I didn't do plein air was because everybody would honk at me and I would have to go to the bathroom. So I, said, <laughs> I said, you know, I like my coffee too much. I'm not going to, where am I going to go to the bathroom? So I'm out of here. All right. If you want to know how she did it, you have to take her class at Joanne Goodwin's studio. Um, it's very beautiful. We'll talk about your colors next because, you know, to me, your work is about precision and color yes yeah i like color you know i tell my students that when they start painting you know they're going to check they're going to explore different colors you know these i like i like the um three primary and the three secondary colors on the color wheel i make the color wheel really easy and so i just feel that or that nature is so intense. I um, mean, it's unbelievable. How could we, how can we not celebrate the earth? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, that's really well said, Pam. Thank you. All right, Jen. Can you show that one with the pumpkin? The pumpkin oh, the head. That's awesome. Yeah, let's see the pumpkin. Yeah, because I want to talk about that one. Okay. We'll give Jen a minute. Um, while she's pulling it up, I'll answer, ask the question for the viewers. Uh, Jean Mihich, our uh, managing producer, says, Pam, did your involvement with mixing glazes influence your artworks in pastel? Well, that's, oh, glaze, oh. Yeah, that's a great question, right? She's good. Mixing glazes are amazing in what they can produce on clay. Same on paper. Well, you know, I always found it rather funny. First of all, who hated, who didn't hate chalk on the chalkboard? And who can't stand clay and funny little fingers, you know? But somehow or another, I wound up with two clays. I wound up with the, right, you know, the clay for pottery and clay for pastel. And I got over that really weird feeling of pastel on your fingers. So I overcame that. And what... What I the reason why I left pottery to go to painting was because I had a dream that I was painting and I really wanted in I wanted color impact and I couldn't because I only wanted to go so far in my pottery, I couldn't get that intensity. So that's another reason why I stopped pottery. And I didn't have a, a gas kiln to turn that blood red color so i said okay i like blood red let's go for pastel interesting yeah so when the is the pumpkin head coming up soon coming she's Yay! got it <laughs> okay well this sculpt this scarecrow was a scarecrow that i saw while driving the school bus and it was on a post which was right down here and his face was like that. So I embellished it by making the gloves look really good and the broom handle. I lengthened his jacket 
And the cat was literally a googly eyed cat hanging upside down on the broom handle. So I looked up cats and then I made this into a cat. You know, it's a perfect circle, perfect circle, perfect circle. And it wasn't until just recently to get ready for this show that I finally figured out what to name it. I knew it was about development. And then based on the cat's reaction and the pumpkin's reaction, I called it fear of development. So I finally want to tell people, you know, save everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. we definitely are in a in an area that is changing rapidly. Yep. I'm sorry, Jen, do you mind? I just wanted to go back to that picture too, because we do try to talk about the art in a little bit of an analytical way on okay. art. Talk. And I think your lines here, I remember from your class, you talk a lot about lines. Your lines here are really interesting with the way the broomstick crosses at a diagonal and you've got yeah. the legs coming in and the arms. Talk about, if you would, Pam, your composition here, because it's really nice. Thank you. Well, First of all, I wanted to say that the background scene is Ely Road, and this farm is Pat Knight's farm, who just recently passed. It's across from the Solbury School. And um, I just, you know, the tails pointing to the moon, the boots pointing to the moon. It's, I don't know, I just linearly, I just think it's fantastic. I mean, this is the way this, pretty much the way it was, you know, I made the ribbons longer, I made the jacket bigger, you know, I wanted to show it flying through the air and it, it was upside, semi upside down like this. And so it just conjured up this image of Bucks County farming. Yeah, definitely. So what, I, you know, I think you've almost got, uh, what is it, a triskelion, although this would be a yeah. quadskelion with the, you know, the, the radiating arms and legs. Yeah. Everything. yeah. I mean, you've got a lot of motion and activity here with the way these lines, you know, like the, the cornrows or whatever that is are drawing you in. Yeah. And then you're just going around in circles with the feet uh, and, and yeah. even this branch across the upper left. Oh yeah. I had to fill in that corner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know if it's not, if, it, if that tree isn't there, it isn't the same. Yeah, no. And I know from your classes, I'm trying to help you out here, Pam, with some of the Oh, analysis. thank you. <laughs> I know from your classes that you talk about, yes, use photos, but don't be married to them. Right. You know, go, because you're not going to, the human eye doesn't look the same as the camera. Okay. So um, we're we're using up our hour very quickly. I know your friends are going to stay with you. We've got a few more comments and questions in the Q and a, um, let's see what we can do in the last remaining time, Jen. Okay. Uh, Jane said, Pam, your class is the highlight of my week. I hope you never stop teaching. Oh, uh, Lonja Miller said, Congratulations, Pam. You've been a true friend and an inspiration as an artist, the Millers. Wow. And then Jim Feld had a question. It seems like pastels are almost the opposite of watercolor. Ever try watercolor? No. I have a student who I teach and she does watercolor and it's absolutely magnificent. Um, it's so delicate. I mean, there's, but I like opacity. I like density. And um, so I think watercolors are fabulous for, you know, like the British, the royal family speaks about their generations of watercolorists and stuff. You know, it's a medium you can take out into the field, uh, but it, it, it doesn't appeal to me to try to do acrylics is like watercolor and you can paint with acrylics and make it look like a watercolor but um it has that density that i like because when i went to all the museums in new york my father took me to every museum every church every mosque every temple 
I went to so many churches. Oh my goodness gracious. I played the organ at the Riverside um, Church. And um, I like density. So there. Okay. Thanks for the question. And I think watercolor is beautiful. Yeah. And again, Pam, I think it's a really nice tribute to you. Not only that, you know, again, with the signature image that was purely based on your artwork mm -hmm. and the honored artist is based on your artwork and your participation and your relationship to the juried show. I mean, you covered it on all bases. Thank and you. We heard here uh, tonight, you know, not only from your students, but from artists of the caliber of Tom Chesser and Lonja and Bill Miller, who I, I think you know, they're notable for their appreciation of other artists. Yeah. Um, you know, kudos to you. Congratulations thank on you. all your achievements. And thanks to all the artists that try to get into the show, that do get into the show. I I got in, I put in my work when I was in my middle 30s and I didn't get in, didn't surprise me. And then 10 years later, I studied I did my pastels for 10 years and I said okay I'm ready and 10 years later I got in and you know 35 I don't get into every show but I get my portfolios in can I can I talk about why I want to get it get into sure. every show sure well there are three ways to get into the, the four ways or three ways anyway sculpture framed portfolio and you can enter that on the same price that you pay. You can put in a sculpture, portfolio, and a frame. Well, the odds of getting a framed in are, you know, one third, two thirds no, one third yes. I mean, the odds are really against you. They're actually worse than that, but yeah. Okay, and there's no reason to feel bad about it. I don't feel bad. I mean, I know my painting was the best they can do, but I don't know what the judges are thinking. And I don't even see the art. So they're doing a, a skew of everything. But I always get my portfolios in. So my name is in the brochure. So 100 years from now, they say, hey, look at that lady. Her name is in every one of them. So that's what I think everybody should do. Get your name in that brochure and to hell with it. I know it, it really, you know, Pam, that on the art committee, it hurts us every year because great artists don't get in and it's, it's tough. But, but I don't go home and cry. I never cry. I never get mad. I'm just happy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm happy now. <laughs> I'm, we're happy for you. I, you got a lot of fans and a lot of supporters, which is great. Thank you so much for sharing oh. your perspective, your artwork, and your time with us on our Thank show. you. Thank yeah. you so much. And love wins. Yay! <laughs> Thank all of you for joining us to celebrate Pam Miller. I hope you'll come back next month for something completely different. Yay. We're going to talk to Armando Sosa, a weaver originally from Guatemala. Some of you know I'm a weaver. I'm excited about this. He does complex weaving and he built his own 40 plus shaft loom. We're not going to get too technical, but that's pretty amazing. Um, and any even non-weaver can appreciate his gorgeous work. Um, so join us for that. Also, many thanks to guest producer Joanne Goodwin, uh, to technical director Jen McHugh, and to managing producer Gene Meech. I'm Laura Womack for Phillips Mill Art Talk. Thank you so much. Good night. Yay! <laughs> People are still leaving. And when we start to talk to the guests at the end, they stop leaving. Um, but we love you, Pammy. And Thank apparently you, everybody loves you. Well, it's a nice accomplishment. It is a because, nice thing. because I really worked hard and I've always loved people. Yeah, we know that. And you have a great perspective. And we're glad we are all looking forward to the party. So all of the submitting artists in or not. And um, oh, I hope they all come. Yeah. 
That's good. So we'll see you all there. Thanks so much. Okay. Love you. Love you. Mwah. Mwah. Thanks. <laughs>